Okay. Uh, yesterday we have discussed about the zero forcing equalizer, and then I solved a one problem on uh, designing of height of equalizer, right? And uh, we could find out the matrix and inverse of that, and the uh, coefficient color matrix, then the output, right? So I said the values of C0, C1, C2, and C minus 1 and C minus 2 is what? Okay, so today we'll discuss about the minimum mean square error uh, equalizer. Okay. So before uh, we start, uh, why do we go for minimum mean square error equalizer? We need to understand what is the drawback in the zero forcing equalizer okay so the drawback in the zero forcing equalizer is uh, it ignores the presence of the additive noise so nowhere we consider the, the presence of uh, noise in the design of the equalizer right so with that uh, this uh, zero forcing equalizer may result in the significant noise enhancement Right, because uh, the uh, frequency response of the equalizer, which is uh, GE of F, will be equal to 1 by C of F, which is nothing but the frequency response of the channel. Right, so the frequency range of uh, that C of F is small uh, because uh, I said the frequency response of the channel uh, compensates by placing a large gain in that frequency range. So, uh, the noise in that frequency range will be greatly enhanced because uh, it is inverse of the uh, frequency response of the equalizer. Fine. So, with that, uh, along with the minimization of ISI, it will enhance the noise component also. So, that is one drawback of the zero forcing equalizer. Okay. So, to overcome that, uh, what uh, the alternate solution is, to relax the zero into symbol interference condition okay. and uh, select the channel equalizer characteristic such that the combined power in the residual ISI and the additive noise at the output of the equalizer will be minimized. Okay. So by relaxing the condition of zero into symbol interference okay, and uh, selecting the uh, channel equalizer characteristics such that the power in the residual into symbol interference and the additive noise at the output of the equalizer is minimized. Right? So this is the alternative solution to the zero forcing equalizer. Because in zero forcing equalizer, we insist the uh, zero into symbol interference condition. Right? So as I said, uh, because uh, the noise is not uh, considered in that, uh, it will enhance the amount of noise also. Fine. So, uh, the channel equalizer that is optimized based on the minimum mean square error criteria uh, will accomplish us this uh, goal. Means that will minimize the residual into symbol interference and as well as the noise at the output of the equalizer. So, let us see what is that uh, MMSE criteria. Okay. That is the minimum mean square error criteria. So let us uh, consider the noise corrupted output of the FIR equalizer, right? Uh, so which is given by the equation what Z of T is equal to summation from N is equal to uh, minus capital N to N C N Y of T minus N into tau. Okay. So this is the output of the FIR equalizer which is corrupted by noise. And uh, this y of t is the input to the equalizer, right? So this y of t will be expressed as summation from n is equal to minus infinity a n x of t minus n into t plus w of t. See, this a n is the data sequence, right? That is the magnitude of the symbol. And x of t minus n t is the input symbol and the W of T is the noise. Okay. So this is the input to the equalizer. Means as I said, I am applying this along with the uh, 
uh, data sequence noise is also considered in this case in the minimum mean square error criteria so output of the mmsc okay which is sampled at uh, time t equal to mt will be expressed as so z of mt is equal to summation n is equal to minus n t n c n y of m t minus n l so let me call this as a equation two and here the desired response of the sample at the output of the equalizer at t equal to m t uh, is the transmitted symbol a m okay so i can define error as the difference between uh, am and the z of mt okay what is am am is a transmitted symbol right and z of mt is the output at t equal to mt that is the equalizer output sample at t equal to mt right so the minimum mean square error between the actual output sample at uh, t equal to mt and the desired values am will be written as that is the mean square error so which is equal to CE is expectation, right? Or mean we say. So Z of MT minus AM whole square. Okay, that is minimum. Uh, that is mean square error, right? This is the mean. Z of MT minus AM is the mean, and E of that I return, and it is a square. So if I expand this, I can means I am substituting here the value of Z of MT. So what is the value of Z of MT? That is equation two. That is summation from n is equal to minus n to n c n y of m t minus n tau right then minus a m as it is written which is square so now if i uh, expand this i can write this as summation from n equal to minus n to n right and uh, one more variable that is summation k equal to minus n to n c n c k see here two coefficients uh, will come into the picture one is c n and another one is ck and r y of n minus k so r y is the autocorrelation function that is because of the noise okay minus two times means it is the a minus b whole square formula just i'm expanding that okay minus two into summation of that factor uh, plus this one e of a squared m right so so I, let me call this as equation three so this is the mean square error uh, equation Uh, as I said, uh, the correlation, right, R y of n minus k here in this equation, R y of n minus k, uh, which is uh, defined as uh, E of, that is expectation of y of m t minus n tau into y of m t minus k tau. Okay, and uh, another variable that is uh, another uh, uh, correlation that is R a y of k, so which is equal to E of y of m t minus k tau into a m. Okay. Uh, and the expectation is taken with respect to the random information sequence uh, that is AM okay, and the additive noise. This uh, R Y of N minus K and as well as R Y A of K. So these are the correlation functions, right? The expectation of that, as I said, R Y of N minus K is E of Y of M T minus N tau into Y of M T minus K tau, right? And similarly, R A Y of K is equal to E of uh, y of m t minus k tau into a m right so these expectations these two expectations are taken with respect to the random information sequence what i said a m and the additive noise okay so the minimum mean square error solution is obtained by differentiating the equation three with respect to the equalizer coefficient c n so what is equation three equation three is this that i said what is mean square error if I differentiate this with respect to uh, the equalizer coefficient, I will be able to find out what is the minimum mean square error solution. Okay, so the necessary condition for the minimum mean square error is uh, this one. What is that? Summation from uh, n is equal to minus n to n c n r y of n minus k, which is equal to r a y of k. What is r a y of k? So R A Y of K is this E of Y of M T minus K tau into A M. Right? So the necessary conditions for the minimum mean square error is this. So for uh, the value of K, which is equal to 0 to 
plus or minus n. And uh, we are saying that two n plus one linear equations for the equalizer coefficients. So equalizer coefficients are what Cn. So these equations depends on the statistical properties. So what are those statistical properties? One is uh, R y of n minus k, and uh, right. So that is uh, because of the noise, and as well as the inter-symbol interference to the auto correlation function R y of n minus k. Okay. So in practice, we say the auto correlation function that is uh, R y of n and uh, the cross correlation that is uh, R a y of n. Uh, so these uh, correlation sequences can be estimated by transmitting a test signal over the channel and using the time average estimates. Okay. Means the autocorrelation and uh, as well as the cross correlation functions that is R y of n and R a y of n uh, will be estimated by transmitting the test signal over the channel using the time average estimates. Let us see what, uh, how do we estimate it. That is, uh, C estimation will be denoted by capital C R Y of N, that is a cap of that, will be equal to 1 by K uh, summation from K equal to 1 to capital K, Y of uh, K T minus N tau into Y of K T. And similarly, the cross correlation will be estimated using this formula. That is, uh, R cap of A Y of N will be equal to 1 by Y summation uh, from k equal to 1 to k, y of kt minus n tau into a k. Okay, this is the estimation of the cross correlation and this is the estimation of the correlation. Okay, so the ensemble average to solve for the equalizer coefficients uh, will be given by this equation. So, what is that equation? This is the equation of 5. Okay, that is this is a cross correlation, r a y of k is a cross correlation. So this is all about uh, minimum mean square error. So what is uh, to carry is uh, in this mean minimum mean square error is in case of a zero forcing equalizer. As I, as I said, there is a drawback. So what is a drawback? Uh, while doing the design of a zero forcing equalizer, the presence of additive noise is ignored. Okay. So because of uh, that. Uh, ignorance of the presence of additive noise, uh, the output of the equalizer okay, will be enhancing the noise. Why it will enhance the noise? Because the frequency response of the equalizer will be given as what? G of F equal to 1 by C of F, right? So this is C of F is our frequency response of the channel, I said. And uh, they are inversely proportional to the channel equalizer. Right? As the C of F is small, so it will uh, enhance because G of F will be large in that sense. Okay, so to overcome this drawback, what we do is we relax the zero inter-symbol interference condition, which is imposed in the zero forcing equalizer. Okay, and by selecting the channel equalizer characteristics such that uh, the power in the residual inter-symbol interference and the additive noise at the output of the equalizer will be minimized. So what is the criteria for uh, minimizing the channel equalizer? So that is the minimum mean square error criteria. So how do we uh, achieve that? So I said that let us consider the noise corrupted uh, signal that is at the output of the FIR equalizer, which is given by this equation, right? I said, what is that of t? And I said y of t is the input of the equalizer, and how do we express that? Right? This is the expression for y of t. So then uh, we will be sampling the output of the equalizer at time t equal to dmt, and this is the expression for output of the equalizer sampled at t equal to dmt. Right here, the desired response sampled at the output of the equalizer at t equal to dmt is the what transmitted symbol am. Right? So we define error as the difference between the given data sequence, that is the desired transmit symbol, and the output sampled at the t equal to mt. So we can define minimum, that is the mean square error, 
between the actual output sample z of mt and the desired value am as uh, e of z of mt minus am whole square so just i'm substituting the value of z of mt in this equation and expanding it with the a minus b whole square formula i get this equation right so in this uh, what i said r y of n uh, minus k is the uh, correlation function and r a y of k is the cross correlation function so these two parameters comes uh, we say these are the statistical parameters that is because of the uh, consideration of the noise okay and i said how do we define that r y of n minus k that is expectation of y of uh, mt minus n term into y of mt minus k term and similarly the cross correlation function will be defined as estimation of y of mt minus kt uh, into am right so the mmse solution will be obtained right by differentiating the equation 3 with respect to the equalizer coefficient c and i said so as i said the necessary condition for the minimum mean square error is this that is summation uh, n is equal to minus n n c n into the correlation function right r y of n minus k which is equal to the cross correlation function that is r a y of k so i said there are uh, 2n plus 1 linear equations for the equalizer coefficients to solve uh, and uh, these equations depends on the statistical properties uh, that is uh, r y of n and r a y of k so these are the two statistical uh, properties that is the auto correlation functions of the noise and as well as the inter symbol interference through the auto correlation function right so the correlation sequence can be estimated um, by transmitting a test signal over the channel using the time average estimates so estimation of this uh, correlation and cross correlation functions will be defined like this that is a uh, r cap of y of n that is estimation of the correlation function which is equal to 1 by k summation k equal to 1 to k y of kt minus n tau into y of kt and similarly the cross correlation estimation function will be defined as r a y of n that is cap which is equal to 1 by k summation k equal to 1 to k y of kt minus n tau into a k okay so the ensemble averages to solve for the equalizer coefficients will be given by the equation 5 so we are estimating here uh, correlation and cross correlation function so which exist due to the presence of noise so this is what the minimum mean square error uh, equalizer so next one is the adaptive equalizers so as i said in case of adaptive equalizers and uh, as i said uh, adaptive equalizers are used when the frequency response of the channel is uh, not known means it is unknown and it is time variant means it keeps changing with time the characteristics of the channel keeps uh, changing with time in that case we use the adaptive equalizers whereas here uh, it will be uh, adjusting the uh, taps of the Uh, co that is coefficients of the equalizer uh, dynamically so with that uh, it is possible to minimize the isi okay so the tap coefficients of the linear equalizer determined by solving the set of linear equations that is in case of zero forcing what is the optimization criteria this is the optimization criteria right these all we defined uh, the linear equations for the zero forcing equalizer that is q of mt is equal to summation n is equal to minus ntn cn into x of mt minus n into tau so which is equal to 1 when m equal to 0 and is 0 for other values of m right this is what we discussed in the zero forcing uh, linear equalizer so and this is the criteria for achieving that and in case of uh, minimum mean square error so what is the criteria to achieve a minimum mean square error optimization that is uh, summation from n equal to minus n cn r y of n minus k which is equal to r a y of k right just now we have discussed about this so this is the correlation function and this is the cross correlation function right 
So in uh, these two cases, that is in uh, zero forcing optimization criteria, and uh, as well as the MMSC criteria, that is a minimum mean square error criteria, uh, we express the set of linear equations in uh, the general matrix form as B into C is equal to D, right? So like what I said in the previous class about linear zero forcing equalizer as HC is equal to Q. In the same way, uh, by forcing optic criteria and as well as MMSC criteria, in general, we can express these linear equations in the matrix form as what B2n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 matrix and C is the column vector representing 2n plus 1 equalizer coefficients and this D is the again 2n plus 1 dimensional column vector. Okay, means this is the uh, 2n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 matrix which are the elements of the input data sequence and this is the coefficients of the equalizer and this is the desired output. Right? So we get this solution for this as what means C optimum which is equal to what I can write B inverse into D. Right? So I need to find the inverse of this matrix B then multiply with this uh, 2n plus 1 column vector I will be able to determine the value of the C or this column vector C. So in turn I can say I will be able to determine the coefficients of the equalizer. MMSC equalizer and how do we express these two together as a in general linear equations in the general matrix form right and how do we determine the value of C right so uh, in practice the implementations of the equalizers right the solution of equation 7 what is that equation 7 this is BC is equal to D Right. What is this B, B I said? It is the 2n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 matrix and C is the column vector I said, which is 2n plus 1 by 1. Right. That is the equation coefficients and D is the what? 2n plus 1 column vector. So solution to this equation um, for the optimum coefficient vector is obtained by iterative procedure. Right. That will avoid the uh, explicit computation of the inverse of the matrix B. So the simplest iterative procedure is the method of a steepest descent. Uh, in that, we choose the arbitrarily the coefficient vector C. Let me say it is C0. Okay. So the initial choice of the coefficients corresponds to the point on the criterion uh, that is being optimized. So uh, let me take one example to say how do I uh, do that iterative procedure to avoid the uh, finding inverse of a matrix and all, right? So, in case of uh, uh, mean square error criteria, right, like we can guess the initial uh, coefficient uh, C naught corresponds to the point on the quadratic uh, mean square error surface. So, that we say 2n plus 1 dimensional space of the coefficients. Okay. So, the gradient vector. Uh, denoted as uh, G naught, right, which is the what derivative of the mean square error with respect to 2n plus 1 filter coefficients. Okay, then uh, that will be computed at that point on the criterion surface, and uh, each tap coefficient is changed in the direction opposite its corresponding gradient component. Right, so the change in the jth tap coefficient is proportional to the size of the jth gradient component. So this is how we um, do by using iterative method. Right? So the gradient vector, uh, I denote that by g suffix k for the mean square error criteria will be found by taking the derivative of the mean square error with respect to each of the 2n plus 1 coefficients. So which is uh, given as that is uh, the gradient vector I said uh, which is denoted by gk which is equal to b into ck minus d, where the value of k can vary from 0 to n.
the coefficient vector ck is updated according to the relation what ck plus 1 is equal to ck minus delta into gk so here this delta is the step size parameter okay, for the iterative procedure and uh, the value of uh, delta is chosen to be small positive integer to ensure that the convergence of the iterative procedure <coughs> so in that case the gradient vector gk converges towards zero and as gk tends to zero uh, when k tends to infinity right and the coefficient vector ck will be uh, tends to that is a c optimum value right uh, let me the which is shown in this uh, diagram so this is a c1 that is x-axis and C2 is the y-axis and this is a gradient. It keeps varying within uh, different circles, so, right? So between two and uh, fro of this uh, motion, it will be able to optimize the, this one. So and this is the initial case, what I said, uh, uh, the initial coefficient C0 is basically at this point, it keeps moving uh, around the different circles of the region. So as I said, adaptive channel equalization is required for the channel whose characteristics change with time, right? In such cases, the intersymbol interference also varies with the time, right? So the channel equalizer must track uh, such time variations in the channel response and adopt its coefficients to reduce the intersymbol interference. So that is what is uh, happening in the adaptive channel equalization. So the optimum coefficients vector that is c opt right that varies with the time due to time variations in the matrix b right say for the criteria of mse that is a minimum mean square error i said the time variations in the vector d right so under these conditions i can say the iterative method what i just described about that gk and all so can be modified to uh, use the estimates of the gradient components so the algorithm for adjusting the equalizer tap coefficients can be expressed as like this. This is a C cap of uh, CK plus one it is, okay? The cap has come here. So take this as C cap of CK plus one. That is the estimation of the uh, tap coefficient, which is equal to C cap K minus delta into G cap K. I told what is this uh, G cap K, right? That denotes the estimate of the gradient vector GK. And uh, C cap K denotes the estimate of the tap coefficient vector C K, right? So this is uh, C cap C K plus one. So it is equal to C cap C K C K cap minus delta into G K cap. So C cap of K plus one is the what estimation of the uh, tap uh, coefficient at a time instant K plus one, which is equal to C cap K minus delta is the step size into G cap K. So G cap K is about estimate of the gradient vector G K. So in the minimum uh, mean square error criteria, the gradient vector G K, right, uh, which is uh, given by the equation nine, where I uh, expressed in the previous case, can be written as G K is equal to minus E, that is the expectation of E k into Y k, right? So an estimation of G k of the gradient vector at the k iteration is uh, computed by using this formula. That is a G cap. Cap has gone here. So please note down here that is G cap of k, which is equal to minus E k into Y k. So let me call this as equation one. So what is this E k? I said is the difference between the desired output from the equalizer at the kth time instant and uh, the actual output z of kt. And this yk denotes the column vector of the 2n plus 1 received signal value okay, contained in the equalizer at the time instant k. So this is the estimation of the gradient vector gk at the kth iteration. 
at the error signal ek is expressed as ak minus zk so ak is the desired symbol and zk is the actual output okay this is the error and uh, so zk is what i said uh, z of kt is the equalizer output so given by the equation to which i told at the beginning right? and ak is the desired symbol i said so substituting these two equations that is uh, 12 in 11 uh, i will be able to obtain the adaptive algorithm for optimizing the app coefficients uh, based on the mean square error criteria as again c cap of k plus one is equal to uh, c cap k plus delta into e k into y k let me call this as equation 14. Okay, please uh, have a note of this cap, so which is shifted when writing the equation. So this cap comes uh, here, C cap K plus 1, which is equal to C cap K plus delta into E K into Y K. What is this C cap K plus 1 is the estimation of the tap coefficient of the equalizer. Okay, this is the present uh, symbol and this is the step size, this is the error signal and this is the output, right? So, the estimation of the gradient vector used in this equation, right? we call this algorithm as the stochastic gradient algorithm or just a LMS algorithm. That is a least mean square algorithm, we say LMS. Uh, see the block diagram of this uh, linear adaptive equalizer based on the mean square error criteria. See, this is the input sequence is possible through a delay element. Right. So this is an FIR filter. Right. See, the output of this is multiplied uh, with the coefficients. Right. It summed up all those things. We get Z of K. That is applied to the detector. Right. So output of the detector is estimated, which is denoted as a K. Right. And again, it is cut back, and here Z K. So these two uh, difference is taken. That is known as the error. Right, ek and uh, that will be varied according to this step, step size delta right so output of that is again fed back to the coefficients so it is uh, adopting uh, this right output of this multiplier is applied to all these uh, multipliers which is applied to the weighing functions right so it is adopted based on this uh, right so output of this equation will be what one input is ek what is that ek ek is nothing but uh, ak minus zk right that into delta that will be given as one input to this multiplier so it keeps adjusting the uh, weighing functions with that it will be able to optimize the tap coefficients so so this is what i said the difference between the desired output that is what uh, this is the desired output, right? AK, and uh, the actual output is what ZK. <coughs> ZK is the all summation output, right? So, from the equalizer is used to form the error signal EK. So, that I think we'll be able to see this diagram EK, right? The difference of these two ZK and AK means AK minus ZK. Uh, then that error will be scaled by the step size parameter delta. Right? So here the step size parameter delta is multiplied with that error signal. Mm. That's delta and dk that multiplies the received signal values y of kt minus n term at the what? 2n plus 1 taps. Uh, 2n plus 1 taps is, yeah, these are the taps, right? 2n plus 1 taps. So the product uh, delta into ek and this y of kt minus n tau at the 2n plus 1 taps are then added right to the previous values of the tap coefficient to obtain the updated tap coefficients according to this uh, equation. Is that equation uh, c cap of k plus 1 which is equal to c cap k plus delta into ek into yk. So according to this equation, it will be updated the tap coefficients.
and uh, that computation that is uh, what I wrote with the equation for delayed, this will be repeated. This will be uh, repeated for each received symbol. So the equalizer coefficients are updated at the symbol rate. Uh, initially, the adaptive equalizer is trained by the transmission of the known pseudo random sequence over the channel. Then, uh, at the demodulator, the equalizer employs the known sequence to adjust its uh, coefficients. So, here we are using the pseudo random sequence right? that will be transmitted over the channel. So, the equalizer will be trained. The demodulator, as I said, the equalizer uses the known sequence to adjust its coefficients. So, with the initial adjustment, the adaptive equalizer switches from this training mode to the decision directed mode. Okay, in that case, uh, we call uh, the decisions at the output of the detector are sufficiently reliable so that the error signal formed by computing the difference between the detector output and the equalizer output. So, which is denoted as what EK, which is equal to uh, A estimation of K, it is okay minus ZK, so which is shown in this uh, diagram here. Yeah. Um, yeah, this EK no, is equal to A negation of, uh, this is estimation of K minus ZK is the value of EK. Okay, so this is all about the adaptive equalizer. So, I have covered more, more than what is required. So what we need to understand about this adaptive equalizer is when do we use this adaptive equalizer? I said that the adaptive equalizer is used for the channels whose characteristics means that if the channel characteristics are changes with time. But in that case, I said inter-symbol interference also varies with the time. In such cases, we go for adaptive channel equalization. So here, the job of the equalizer is to track that the time variations in the channel response and adopt coefficients to reduce the inter-symbol interference. So how do we do that uh, for the procedure? And what is the algorithm for that? This uh, C cap of K plus one is equal to C cap K minus delta into G cap K, right? What is it? This uh, delta is the uh, para step size parameter and this is the gradient vector. So, how do we calculate uh, GK? Yes. And as well as, uh, how do we estimate uh, the gradient vector? And how do we determine the error signal? All I said, right? EK is equal to uh, A cap K minus ZK. Right? So, with that, how does it uh, uh, vary the coefficients of the channel adaptively? Right? That is C cap K plus 1 is equal to C cap K plus delta into EK into YK. So, this algorithm I said as what? LMS algorithm or stochastic gradient algorithm. So maybe you may feel this uh, diagram is more complex uh, looking at one stretch, but this is just an FIR filter. As I said, this is the input sequence is passed through the, these delay elements, right? Then uh, from each there is a weighing function, right? Which is multiplied by what C0, C1, C2, and C minus 1, C minus 2, and so on, right? Then for that, what is added here? The output of all those things will be added. I get the ZK. Right? That is given to the detector. So output of detector is what AK. And this is the desired one I said. And this is the actual one. The difference of that is the error. That will be uh, corrected by using the uh, steps by varying the value of delta. Output of that will be again multiplied and added with that coefficient. So that is what is done here. Multiplier summer. Okay, with the input sequence, multiplied the correction factor added to this coefficient. In that way, it is correcting the or adjusting the channel coefficients. Okay, so this multiplier and adder is the extra element with respect to the previous uh, circuits what I have discussed. Okay, in the earlier circuit, the input sequence is a delay element, then this multiplier. Some more will be there, right? Till this, we used to say there is the FIR output of the uh, equalizer, right? Then now I have detector. Output of the detector, I say it is AK. Difference of these two, 
is the error signal that is applied to the multiplier adjusting the step size parameter that is given as input by multiplying with yk right adding with the channel coefficient dynamic or adaptability so with that this is the a linear adaptive equalizer based on the mean square error criteria fine so this is all about adaptive equalizer i think uh, this is uh, some more information about that how do we do the conversions and all so to say a little bit about that uh, what i can say the decision errors at the output of the detector uh, occur infrequently it means decision errors right so such errors we have little effect on the performance of the tracking algorithm so i said here uh, in this case uh, what i said this computation right the equalizer coefficients are updated on at the symbol head right so initially i said the, the adaptive equalizer is trained by the transmission of known pseudo random sequence over the channel then at the demodulator the equalizer employs the known sequence to adjust the coefficients so here this equalizer the what is that adaptive equalizer switches from training mode to the decision directed mode right uh, upon initial adjustment this adaptive equalizer switches from training mode to the decision directed mode in that case the decisions at the output of the detector are sufficiently reliable <coughs> so that the error signal is formed by computing the difference between the detector output and the equalizer output that is what i have written eks a cap k minus zk where ak is the output of the detector ak and zk is the output of the uh, equalizer fir filter right so here as a rule of thumb we select the step size delta to ensure the convergence and good tracking capabilities for the slowly varying channels so delta as a sub size will be equal to what i can write 1 divided by 5 of 2n plus 1 into pr so this pr denotes the received signal plus noise power okay so this can be estimated from the received signal pr okay uh, i think uh, this is the uh, initial convergence characteristics of the lms algorithm with the different step sizes okay, with the different uh, delta values when delta is 0 0.05 what happens when delta is 0 0.09 what happens and all so i think so much and for different iterations and what is the output of the mmsc okay. Uh, okay let me stop with this i think so this is the diagram for uh, an adaptive zero forcing equalizer so input is uh, input data sequence is positive delay element again same thing multiplier out of that is uh, fir right then detector out of that c error signal c error step size right then out of that is to multiplier and then added up the this one right so again here one more uh, delay element is used okay. so slightly different it is compared to the previous one uh, so last one is the decision feedback equalizer so i don't know no yes you are all with me i don't know so it is slightly uh, more abstract question okay this equalizer topic ha sir ha the class is there class mein se martin sir ah nadi the first hour ah so the decision feedback equalizer uh, mm. yes uh, what people are doing will be able to follow what i said about uh, Adaptive equalizer is slightly more uh, of abstract version. Uh, I think so much is not there for your uh, this one also, but uh, you need to understand what it is and all to know exactly the importance of the adaptive equalizer.
Okay, let me <coughs> cover that uh, decision feedback equalizer. So, as I was telling, uh, the linear uh, uh, filter equalizer, what I discussed, right, is uh, effective on the channels with the wireline telephone channel where the intersymbol interference is not severe. Okay. So, this intersymbol interference is severe uh, when the channel is uh, wireless. Okay. In case of wired channel, the ISI is uh, less significant, what I mean to say. So, what I mean to say is that the linear equalizers are applied for the channels where the... Sir? So, <laughs> where the channel is not severe. Okay, I think uh, uh, time is up. Let me take up this in the next class what I feel. Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. So, the abstract level is there. So, what is the PPT share? So, decision feedback is just you can go through the block diagram of decision feedback equalizer. Okay. I will so far they have asked about linear equalizer and adaptive equalizer in the question paper has come so many times. So, decision feedback equalizer, let me share in the next class. I feel. Okay. So, thank you. Yes, I will come to it today.